Welcome back everyone. My name is Tank. Today is the 27th of February, 2022. In this video, I want to give you guys some food for thought when it comes to super fluid staking before the mechanism goes live on the Osmosis platform. So I'm going to be sharing with you guys some things to think about. I'm going to be sharing with you guys some information that's out there on YouTube that maybe some of you guys may have not seen just yet. Uh, but before I do that, if you guys would do me a huge favor, like this video, subscribe to the channel. I will have you know when we hit 1000 subscribers here on YouTube, I'm giving away to two lucky individuals a pretty big bag of crypto. So do me a favor, do yourself a favor, do everybody in the Cosmos ecosystem a favor, like this video, subscribe to the channel. Let's go ahead and just quickly jump on into the topic at hand, which again is super fluid staking and give you guys my things that I'm thinking about before the mechanism goes live, because I know a lot of you guys are eagerly awaiting for tomorrow to come around and may just ape in on the LP pool before thinking about a few things. I want to tell you guys, first and foremost, there's only one pool that's going to to be able to utilize super fluid staking. And of course, that is going to be pool one. Now, if you guys haven't been already using Osmosis, I will say my personal opinion is I love pool one. Even without super fluid staking, pool one is probably my favorite pool out of all of them. Not only does it have a pretty good APR still to this day, but obviously it has the biggest liquidity in all of the pools and also their pairs when it comes to Osmo and Atom is tightly correlated to each other. So the impermanent loss factor that you always have to take in when it comes to providing uh, liquidity on these LP pools is not so much there compared to some of the other pools that you could be in. Uh, so I already do like pool one, but obviously pool one for a number of reasons is going to be the first pool that they utilize super fluid staking on. And when it comes to participating with pool one or just the sole reason to partake in super fluid staking, there are a couple of things that I think that you guys should be considering before aping in a good big amount. Now, I'm not telling you to do anything in any which way. Again, you do you. I'm not a financial advisor. I just want to give you guys some things to think about. Now, right now, the APR is about 76.8. Now, when super fluid staking goes live, I'm guessing like a lot of other people, that the APR is obviously going to go down. It just makes sense that it's probably going to go down. I'm thinking it's going to probably land anywhere within 50 to 61%, kind of where the seven-day unbonding range is right now. Again, that's not any kind of alpha. I don't know. I'm just guessing based on what I've already heard and doing my own homework. Um, but I'm thinking it's going to be anywhere between 50 and 61.44, kind of like I said, where it's at right now. With that being said, you guys have to to take into account what traditional staking looks like and those rewards versus getting into this pool just for the fact of being in it for super fluid staking. That might not be the best route to go when you're looking at the rewards that you're getting per APR, APY. You have to look at both sides of the coin. So let's do that just now. If you take a look at Atom Scan, you can see that the inflation rate right now for the Osmosis token is right around 62.46% and there's about 93.4%. 9 mil of its stake. Now, again, I haven't updated this. It's been up for about an hour. It could be a little off just a little bit. Uh, other thing I want to show you guys is on stakely.io. The annualized reward for staking Osmo right now is at 79.86%. So if this dips down in osmosis and gets us anywhere between 50 to 61%, is it a good idea in the sole argument of being in pool one just to partake in super fluid staking to actually put a humongous chunk of what you've already been using traditionally staking into this pool? I don't think so. I think that the already rewards that we're getting with traditional staking are really, really juicy as it is. So as I do want to get a little bit of exposure in super fluid staking to see how it goes, I'm not totally convinced that moving a big portion of my staked bag, assuming that you are using staking traditionally with your Osmosis token, is a good idea. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, there's a couple of other things that go along with that opinion. And with that being said, I do want to share with you guys a quick clip from Sunny and the team uh, when they put out their meeting or their uh, thoughts on things on the Osmosis YouTube channel because they do that weekly, guys. If you guys don't know, I'll also try to share a link down below if you guys aren't watching those videos. With that being said, I want to share with you guys that clip that they just recently shared with everybody on their channel so that you guys can know their concerns as well. So I'm going to go ahead and share that with you guys right now. You know, some of, you know, some of the main things that people should be aware of about, you know, some of the restrictions that will be in place. Um, one, for example, is we're going to start off with actually just 
uh, pool one being able to be used for superfluids. So that, that's the atom osmo pool. Uh, we figure that's, you know, probably the safest thing to test with just because it has the, you know, highest amount of liquidity already. And so it's like the least uh, gameable. It's, 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 it's the hardest to manipulate and it will like give us an opportunity to test superfluid before we then start to expand it to be able to be used with more pools. Um, so, yeah, so, that, so that's one piece. Um, on top of that, you know, some other restrictions that we we made. Uh, one is another one that people should be sort of a little bit of aware about uh, is that when you super fluid, you're, you're going to not be able to vote. You're going to be basically giving up your governance power. Um, well, so, well, really what will happen is you, you, you'll, you know, traditionally in governance, what happens is when you uh, inherit votes from, you know, when you delegate to a validator, you inherit their votes, except you can override their vote. Um, unfortunately, the way that it's architected right now in Superfluid, you can't actually override your validator's vote, which is why it's um, sort of more important to vote, to delegate to the right validator in a way. Um, we, we, in the future, we will probably be able to add governance power to Superfluid stake as well. I just said in the current architecture, it was it, it was a little bit messy on how to do it, and so we, we, we you know, we want to make sure that's tested uh, more because it it involves like you know, Superfluid is already touching so many different modules. It's touching like the staking module, the distribution module, the lockups module, and it's like we you know we wanted to just like hey, let's rem let's remove one module that we don't have to like incorporate into this mess of like. Um, you know, free changes throughout the system to make superfluid possible. Um, what else? Uh, the other one is that per like pool, you'll only be able to superfluid delegate to one validator. So you have to choose, you know, normally when you stake, you can say like, oh, I want to delegate to like these five validators in this proportion or whatever. Uh, in superfluid, you know, let's say with the Adam Osmo pool, you'll have to be able, you'll have to say like, hey, I want all my LP shares of this pool to be super fluid staked with um, only one validator. You can't split it up right now. And that's actually more at the UI level, I think, uh, just to make that a little bit cleaner. Um, and then I think that's the main restriction. Oh, and, and yeah, you, you can't um, re-delegate. So you can't uh, like, you know, you can't switch that validator. You have to unbond and then uh, and then bond and then like re, re super fluid stake again. So that's uh, also, you know, so, so yeah, so, you know, basically people should be aware that, you know, there are all these sort of restrictions that come via super fluid staking that, you know, are not there in normal staking, but, and over time, I think they will become, those restrictions will be removed, but so yeah, that's just some, you know, things that people should be aware of and expecting as to once the MVP of Superfluid goes live at the end of the month. So again, guys, you heard from Sunny and the team themselves, a few things to think about when it comes to partaking in Superfluid staking on the Osmosis platform. There's going to be some things that you are going to be giving up to utilize Superfluid staking. And some of those things are uh, things that you really need to consider in your portfolio. Again, guys, it's all about how you personally decide to weight your portfolio and utilize it within the Osmosis platform. This is not financial advice, but I want you guys to think about one is giving up a lot of your voting power to go ahead and jump into the LP pool just for the sake of utilizing super fluid staking worth it. Again, you heard it for the time being, you're not going to be able to use those LP rewards uh, that are going to be super fluid staked to vote. And also you're not going to be able to redelegate. So again, I'm going to stress to you guys, research your validators. Don't just throw it at a validator just because they flash up a certain number to you guys. Don't just throw it at a validator just because they have the most delegations. Really do your homework and find out how those validators vote because again, you're losing the power when you utilize superfluid staking for the time being 
when it comes to voting. So if you're going to be giving those derivatives or those LP tokens to Superfluid Stake to those validators or whomever you choose, make sure they align with your thoughts, guys. You don't want to be giving it to a validator who thinks totally opposite of what you think when it comes to the DEX or when it comes to the ecosystem. Definitely think about that. I know a lot of people might not think that that has a lot of value. Your vote, your voice has a lot of value, especially when it comes to using it for governance, guys. So please think about that. Do some homework when it comes to your validators. Be in the know. Another thing to think about, guys, of course, is being exposed to impermanent loss. You guys have to understand that that's always a risk. I know pool one, like I said earlier, is probably my favorite pool as it is just because Osmo and Adam are pretty much tightly correlated with each other. There's not as much exposure to that risk when it comes to being in LP rewards or I'm sorry, when it comes to being into LPs uh, on the Osmosis platform, but that's still something to think about, right? You're still being being exposed to impermanent loss. So please remember that as well. If you're getting in to pool one just for the sake of superfluid staking, really compare it to just traditional staking with your Osmo. Again, guys, I've already showed you guys on stakely.io, which is a really good site to use for some of your staking uh, tokens. You can see right now the uh, uh, you can see right now the annualized return is still at 79.86%. So that's a really juicy return to just traditionally stake and you don't give up anything just traditionally staking as it is right now, guys. Again, I'm not trying to tell you guys to do anything in any which way. I just want to give you guys some things to think about. I do have me some exposure into pool one because I am highly fascinated about superfluid staking and the mechanism going forward. I do think it's a game changer, not just for the osmosis decks, but I think it's going to be a game changer for the rest of the crypto ecosystem when they see how it actually functions and how it can be utilized. Again, guys, I just want to make a really quick video to give you guys some food for thought, to give you guys something to think about before aping in on pool one. Again, it might be great or it might be something that has a lot of bumps in the road before everything is ironed out. I'm not trying to give you guys any kind of FUD and I'm also not trying to promote anything. I'm just giving you guys something to think about. So I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. I hope you guys found it beneficial. If you guys would, again, please do me a huge favor. We are trying to grow here. Uh, if you would like the video, subscribe to the channel. With that being said, stay in profits, my friends. Stay blessed. Peace.